Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today I am making a video on setting up my shaman. I was planning on finishing my remix leveling here and I, I hit a snag because all of my talents got reset. And I don't know what the heck happened. I don't know what they changed and what they didn't. So I'm gonna go through it on my own talk through it on my own here and hopefully you find this helpful or at the very least relaxing all right here is my shaman their name is surgeon they are a troll they are elemental and as you can see I have unspent talent points because my tree got completely reset now I am going to be cheating here. I am not just filling these in uh, willy-nilly. I am using a guide. It is a guide from Wowhead for the War, War Within pre-patch. And we are going to be using the Mythic Plus build. All right, just gonna start with the Shaman Tree. First, we have Lava Burst. Hurls Molten Lava at the target, dealing about 20,000 fire damage. Lava Burst will always crit if the target is affected by Flame Shock. This is going to generate 8 Maelstrom, and it has 2 charges. Do I have this bound yet? It says I haven't added this to an action bar. So, let's do that. Alright, moving over, we have Astral Shift. Shift partially into the elemental planes, taking 40% less damage for 12 seconds. That's a pretty good damage reduction cooldown. And then last year we cannot not take this because it's automatically given to us. We have Chain Lightning. This is going to hurl a bolt of lightning at the enemy, dealing 14,000 nature damage, and then jumping to additional targets. Affects five total targets. So we have a target cap on our Chain Lightning there. That's probably good to know moving forward. All right, Astral Shift. I believe I already have that bound to F3, because F3 is my shield wall button for every character. It's just, I don't have to think about it. I, if I'm in danger, I press F3. More often than not, that is a massive DR. And then Chain Lightning is going to go at number 5, which is my usual AoE key. Alright, that is it for the first row. Let's move on to the second row. Earth Shield, which I don't remember taking this in my previous build. Protects the target with an Urshan shield, increasing your healing on them by 20% and healing them for 16k when they take damage. This heal can occur once every few seconds. What? Every few seconds? You're not going to be specific. Max 9 charges. Urshan shield can only be placed on one target at a time. Only one elemental shield can be active on the shaman. So I guess this is this goes on ourselves. I'm going to assume. Um, I can't imagine like throwing it on a tank constantly as I'm in elemental spec. All right. Where do I want this to be bound to? Is the question. Do I have a shift 4? Shift 4 is a common button for healing for me. It's also a battle res button. Since I don't have that, I think I can just go with shift 4 for this one. And I'm going to put it down here with my other shields. Or shield. So let's extend bar 5. Actually, it's already extended, so we'll just drag it down. And then we'll 
put an F4 on it. I wonder why I can't use it. Give me a target. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll come back to that at some point, I'm sure. Wind shear, I have to take this one. Disrupts the target's concentration with a burst of wind, interrupting spell casting and preventing any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. It's on a 12 second cooldown. There's the shortest kick in the game. Next we're going to take Plains Traveler, it recommends, which reduces the cooldown of Astral Shift by 30 seconds. So that's going to knock that down from two minutes to a minute and a half. Probably better than getting the extra DR. Having a damage reduction more often is probably better than having a more powerful one in Mythic Plus because once things get into like fortified weeks, you need to have those DRs for those big spells, especially if you risk getting double tapped, otherwise you're just going to hit the floor. Maybe on Tyrannical Weeks you would choose the other option to help survive those big nukes during the boss fights, but I think it's a safe call to just get the, da the cooldown reduction. Next we are taking Spirit Wolf. This is a passive ability. It's going to increase the speed gained from Ghost Wolf by 5%, and there's 5% damage reduction every second, stacking up to four times. So while I'm in Ghost Wolf, if I'm in Ghost Wolf for at least four seconds, I will eventually hit a 20% movement speed and damage reduction. That's pretty good to know. So you can use Spirit Wolf as a defensive And then last for this row, we're taking Frost Shock. This is going to be our slow. And oh my gosh! So, so I, the key bindings on this character are abysmal. My slow button is usually Shift Five, but it, that but it's already taken by Earthbind. We'll just leave it under Flame Shock for now, and we'll keep moving on here. All right. According to the guide, that's it for that row. So we're going to move down to the third row. We're going to take Fire and Ice. Easy passive increases all Fire and Frost damage you deal by three percent. Next, we're going to take our Capacitor Totem. It's a one-minute cooldown. Summons the totem at the location that gathers electrical energy and explodes after two seconds, stunning all enemies within eight yards for three seconds. So there's an activation time. Gust of wind. Wait, what? 20 second cool, a gust of wind hurls you forward. Interesting. So we have kind of a blink going on here. Last for the row is Brimming with Life. Maximum health increased by 10%. Nice. And while you are at full health, Reincarnation cools down 75% faster. Interesting. Alright, moving down here. Healing Stream Totem. Summons a totem at your feet for 15 seconds that heals an injured party or raid member within 40 yards for 6k every 1.5 seconds. So that's going to be 10 ticks of 6k for a total of 60k healing. Now remember, this is on Remix, so I don't know how these numbers translate into the War Within pre-patch. I'm just trying to set this guy up for my trek to 70. Um, I 
take that. And we're going to bind Healing Stream Totem to Shift H. Which for me is no problem at all to hit. That is an easy heat bind. Probably going to want to move it up here at some point, but we'll leave it down there for now. Alright, only two more for this row. We have Purge. The good old Purge. This removes one beneficial magic effect from the enemy. And then last we'll take our Earth Elemental. I think this is Dwayne the Rock. Alright. That's it for that row. Let's keep on going here. Elemental Resistance. Healing from Healing Stream Totem. Reduces Fire Frost and Nature Damage taken by 6% for 3 seconds. What? So when I pop Healing Stream Totem, I get a 6% DR from only 3 different types of magical damage? Weird, but better than nothing, I suppose. Nature's Guardian. When your health is brought below 35% health, you instantly heal for 27% of your maximum health. It cannot occur more than once every 45 seconds. And last, we have Nature's Fury. Increases the critical strike chance of your nature spells and abilities by 4%. Refreshing Waters. Your healing surge is 30% more effective on yourself. Ooh, that's, that's good stuff. Elemental Warding, a simple, reduces all magical damage taken by 6%. This build does not take Hex as a baseline. Good to know. Although, they removed Incorporeal and Afflicted. So, well I guess this would just be for Incorporeal. No Windrush Totem in our Mythic Plus build. And then we have Primordial Bond. While you have an Elemental active, your damage taken is reduced by 5%. They are sneaking in so many little DRs every, every which way. Alright, one second. Okay, continuing on here, we have Spirit Walker's Grace. Calls upon the guidance of the spirits for 15 seconds, permitting movement while casting shaman spells. Castable while casting. Ancestral Guidance. For the next 10 seconds, 25% of your healing done and 25% of your damage done is converted to healing on up to three nearby injured party or raid members, up to 60k healing to each target per second. So this is our Vampiric Embrace, right? That's going to help out the group when we're taking some damage. Um, We're going to... So I think I already have Spirit Walker's Grace bound to a very weird key, Shift F1. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace my Windrush Totem, which is not in our build, with the Ancestral Guidance uh, spell. Just because Shift 3 is usually my raid cooldown uh, button. So for example, on my Death Knight, it's my AMZ. Um, 
it, uh, if I were to play Shadow Priest, it would be the Vampiric Embrace. So that's a nice, comfortable keybind to have. Next, we have Thunderstorm, which <laughs> I always think is comical when I see used most of the time incorrectly, because shamans like to stand right in the middle of the pack and then blast everything away. This, this is going to call down a Bolt of Lightning, dealing some damage to enemies within 10 yards, reducing their movement speed by 40% for 5 seconds and knocking them away from the shaman. Usable while stunned. That seems more like a PvP thing right at the end there. But what's really funny about this is when shamans use this to try and, like, stop casts, it launches everything 10 yards away, and then it slows it all. So you can't even, like, easily group it back up. It, it <laughs> when I see this spell used, it's most of the time used incorrectly. We're going to take it, though, because the guide says so. Totemic Focus increases the radius of your totem effects by 15%, increases the duration of your Earthbind and Earth Grab totems by 10 seconds, and increases the duration of your Healing Stream, Tremor, Poison Cleansing, and Wind Rush totems by 3 seconds. Wow, that's pretty big. This is going to bust all of our totems. Buff all of our totems. Last one for this row. The effects enhanced imbues. The effects of your weapon imbues are increased by 30%. All right, next row, we only have two picks. Graceful Spirit reduces the cooldown of Spearwalker's Grace by 30%, increases your movement speed by 20% while it's active. That's pretty good. Move faster while we're pew-pewing, while we're moving. And then we're going to skip everything and go way over to Seasoned Winds. Interrupting a spell with Wind Shear decreases your damage taken from that spell school by 15% for 18 seconds stacks up to two times what I feel like they're really leaning into making shamans a little bit more survival <laughs> stacking some survivability here because we have so much DR hidden in this talent tree now even if I might not even be playing this character it's really useful for me to know all this stuff because I'll probably be inviting people like elemental shamans to my groups and me knowing what they have and don't have is crucial. Thundershock, another passive. Thunderstorm knocks enemies up instead of away and it's cooldown is reduced by five seconds. That's great. No more, <laughs> no more blasting those groups just so far away. Last for this row is Totemic Recall. Resets the cooldown of your most recently used totems with a base cooldown shorter than three minutes. Okay. So I imagine this could be used as like, oh, I just stunned something with my cap totem. It's still on cooldown. I need it again for another stop. Let's reset its cooldown. In our last row, we have three picks. Nature's Swiftness. Your next healing or damaging nature spells instant cast and cost no mana. This one's really strange to me because it's a one minute cooldown and it only affects one spell. Do shamans really struggle with like mana management? I guess the instant cast thing is pretty good. Especially if you're like, I don't know, you can hit Nature's Swiftness and you could healing surge yourself in an emergency all right well I would take the last two but since I'm not 70 yet I can't so we'll just talk about these I will be taking stone bulwark totem a two minute cooldown summons a totem with 15k health at the feet of the caster for 30 seconds, granting the caster a shield absorbing 125,000 damage for 10 seconds and up to an additional 12k every 5 seconds. So another DR for Shaman there. Very good. And then last for this... Last for the Shaman one, we have Call of the Elements, which reduces the cooldown of Totemic Recall by 30 seconds. That's going to drop that down to 2 minutes. 
All right, that's it for the shaman side. We're going to move on over to the elemental side. First, we're taking elemental blast. Harnesses the raw power of the elements, dealing 78k elemental damage. It increases your critical strike or haste by 6%. Or mastery by 11%. RNG? Do you have RNG in this? Uh, for 10 seconds. Costs 90 Maelstrom. So we're going to go ahead. My Earthshock was on my 2 key. We're going to switch that out. Earthquake causes the earth within 8 yards of your target to tremble and break, dealing 27k physical damage over 7 seconds, and has a 5% chance to knock the enemy down. Multiple uses of, our, of Earthquake may overlap. I think this is already bound as well to 3. Elemental Fury. Your damaging critical strikes deal 250 damage percent damage instead of the usual 200 percent. And then we're going to have our fire elemental calls forth a greater fire elemental to rain destruction on your enemies for 30 seconds. While the fire elemental is active, flame shock deals damage 33 percent faster, and newly applied flame shocks last 100 percent longer. Flash of Lightning increases the critical strike chance of Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning by 10%. Casting Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt reduces the cooldown of your nature spells by one second. Surge of Power. Passive. Elemental Blast and Earthquake enhance your next spell cast within 15 seconds. Flame Shock, the next cast also applies Flame Shock to one additional target. If you do a Lightning Bolt, your next cast will cause two additional elemental overloads. Chain Lightning, your next cast will chain to one additional target, so six instead of five. And then with Lava Burst, it'll reduce the cooldown of your Fire and Storm Elemental. Hmm. And then it'll rough Frost Shock by freezing the target in place. So I'm assuming that tracking this is going to be crucial because you're going to want to be probably hitting Lava Burst to reduce the cooldown of your elementals. Then we have Echo of the Elements. Lava Burst has an additional charge, which is always good. I think it's our main Maelstrom generator, so it's always good to have another charge of that. Ice Fury. Casting Lava Burst has a chance to replace your Frost Shock with Ice Fury, stacking up to two times. And Ice Fury hurls Frigid Ice at the target, dealing 24,000 Frost Damage and causing your next two Frost Shocks to deal even more damage and generate more Maelstrom. So I'm going to want to have um, Frost Shock bound to something pretty comfortable if we're going to be having this proc. Unrelenting Calamity reduces the cast time of Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning by 0.25 seconds and increases the duration of Earthquake by one second. Last for the row, Master of the Elements. Casting Lava Burst increases the damage or healing of your next Nature, Physical, or Frost spell by 15%. All right, one, two, you have five for the next row. Starting with, wait, I didn't take this. There we go. All right, Fusion of the Elements. After casting Ice Fury, the next time you cast a Nature and Fire spell, you additionally cast an Elemental Blast at your target at 60% effectiveness. Swelling Maelstrom. Increases your maximum Maelstrom by 50. That's huge. Also increases Earthshock, Elemental Blast, and Earthquake damage by 5%. Also huge. Primordial Fury. 
Elemental Fury increases critical strike damage by an additional 25%. Flow of Power increases the Maelstrom generated by Lightning Bolt and Lava Burst by 2. And last, Elemental Utility or Unity. While a Storm Elemental is active, your nature damage dealt is increased by 10%. And while a Fire Elemental is active, your fire damage dealt is increased. Okay, cool. Next row, we have three. We have Lightning Conduit. While Lightning Shield is active, your nature damage dealt is increased by 8%. Whoa. So I've always been traditionally pretty bad at keeping uh, my Lightning Shield up. Knowing this, I'm going to try to stay on top of it a little better. We have our improved Flame Tongue weapon. Imbuing your weapon with Flame Tongue increases your fire spell damage by 5% for one hour. And then last for the row, Flames of the Cauldron. Reduces the cooldown of Flame Shock by 1.5 seconds, and Flame Shock deals 15% more damage. Oh, sorry, Feel, deals damage 15% faster. Not the same thing. Two for the next row. Eye of the Storm reduces the Maelstrom cost of Earth Shock and Earthquake by 5, and reduces the Maelstrom cost of Elemental Blast by 10. We're also taking Searing Flames. Flame Shock damage has a chance to generate two Maelstrom. Ascendance. This one's back. I noticed this one was a little optional last time. This is the big cooldown. Transform into a Flame Ascendant for 15 seconds, replacing Chain Lightning with Lava Beam, removing the cooldown of Lava Burst, and increasing the damage of Lava Burst by an amount equal to your crit strike chance. When you transform into Flame Ascendant, instantly cast a Lava Burst at all enemies afflicted, affected by Flame Shock and refresh your Flame Shock durations to 18 seconds. Wow. So you could do a lot of burst here, setting up, you know, just spreading those Flame Shocks around and then hitting Ascendants and have everything just go poof. That is really cool. Echo up the elements. When your Storm Elemental or Fire Elemental expires, it leaves behind a lesser Elemental to continue attacking your enemies for 15 seconds. And then we're going to take Primordial Wave. Blast your target with a Primordial Wave, dealing almost 6,000 Elemental damage and applying Flame Shock. Your next Lava Burst will also hit all targets affected by your Flame Shock for 80% of the normal damage. Um... Go ahead, if possible, and bind this to shift 2. And I'm going to not forget to cast Purge there. Hmm. i got to change some things around here. Still don't have a decent keybind for my frost shock yet. Right, let's extend bar one all the way out so we have full use of that. And since purge just has, since it's instant just costs mana, we can drop it right down to the bottom action bar here. Uh, I'm not going to be too picky about where it is. I'm just going to put it right there. Now we can move this guy over. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing here. I don't, can't really remember. Anyways, on with it. Wait, I didn't even bind a sentence. What are we going to do with that? I don't know. We'll do shift F3 for Rocky. He seems like more of a defensive. Alright, six to go. Mount. 
mountains will fall. Earth shock, elemental blast, and earthquake can trigger your mastery elemental overload at 80, sorry, 50% effectiveness. Overloaded earthquakes do not knock enemies down. What is, all right, so we're going to click it. And now we're going to check to see what mastery is. Elemental overload increases all elemental and physical damage by 18.5%. Your lightning bolt, lava burst, and chain lightning cast have a 61.9 or 62% chance to trigger a second cast on the same target, dealing 25% of normal damage and generating less maelstrom. So it's just more, more stuff, more resources, more damage. Preeminence. Your haste is increased by 25% while Ascendance is active and its duration is increased by 3 seconds. Holy shit. So that's going to give us a lust on top of an already powerful cooldown. Skybreaker's Fiery Demise. Flame Shock damage over time. Critical Strikes. Wow. Very, very weird specific. Flame Shock dot crits. Reduce the cooldown of your fire and storm elemental by one second. And Flame Shock has a 50% increased critical strike chance. Well, that 50% increased chance now makes sense because I was like, whoa, how often that's critting? Well, a lot more now. And last one for the row is Splintered Elementals. Sorry, Splintered Elements. <laughs> Primordial Wave grants you 20% haste plus 4% for each additional lava burst generated by Primordial Wave. Wow, so we're going to be hitting Primordial Wave often because that's going to increase our haste a lot. All right, we have two points left, and we have three points at the end of the row here. Let's see. I'm gonna, for now, I'm going to skip... Well, I'll read this one, but I think I'm going to skip this one for now. Because the other two seem far more interesting. Echoes of Great Sundering. After casting Earthshock... We'll just skip that paragraph because we're not using Earthshock. After casting Elemental Blast, your next Earthquake deals 140% additional damage. So... If we got a big pull going, and I'm about to drop a nice big earthquake on top of those mobs, I should probably drop it at Mental Blast first, just to buff it even further. We're going to skip that for now, and we're going to take this one instead, because it sounds cooler. Casting Lava Burst, which I'm going to be doing a lot to generate Maelstrom, has a 7% chance to activate Ascendance for 6 seconds. And this... Uh, the description of a sentence here is just the same as it was up here. That's really cool. I'll, I'll take that. And then this one sounds awesome. Liquid Magma Totem. Summons a totem at the target location that erupts dealing 15k fire damage and applying flame shock to three enemies within eight yards. Continues hurling liquid magma at a random nearby target every 0.8 seconds for six seconds, dealing even more damage. To all enemies. So there's no cap on that. And that is going to be our final point for now. Whew. Let's apply the changes. Oh my gosh. And it just dumped a bunch of stuff on my bar there. Um... Is there a way to give this a name? I'll just call it Mythic Plus. There we go. Alright. So that is my Elemental Shaman set up here. Um, let's fine tune our UI a little bit. And let's go through our spell book one more time. Just to make sure we're not missing anything.
All right, before we go through this, let's make sure everything's in its place. Tremor totem? Did I not take that? Tremor totem is not taken in the Mythic Plus build, so we'll remove that. Um... So traditionally, I did start putting less than F4. I don't think I want that one. That's kind of easy to fat finger, um, which is strange to hear, I know. But we're going to switch, switch that to you. That's what I've used for um, lust in the past. Just because you is so far across the keyboard, it's really hard to fat finger the lust. You really need to be intentional about go, like dragging your finger all the way across the board and hitting you. So that's what we'll do there. Um. Wow, that's so cool. We don't have Stormkeeper, right? We do not. Means we can move things around a little bit more. Um, gonna want to put these up there. So we'll hit you there. We'll hit our. I forgot what that was called already. Ancestral Guidance, Healing Stream Totem. There's Dwayne. We got our Magma. Cap Totem. Earthbind Totem. Thunderstorm. Purge. Let's see. like click in the frost shot because I don't know what to bind it to. Um, Q? Q would be a good button for that. Let's try and run away. We'll rebind it. Whee! Got a lot of combat. Is there a cooldown on this? There isn't. That means we can kind of just, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll keep it right there for now, just so I can see that that bind. Gust of Wind, I didn't bind. Totemic Recall, I didn't bind. Major Swiftness, I didn't bind. Dang it. Whee! <laughs> Tornado. All right, well, now I have, like, a blink. Which I guess once Remix is over, I can replace the Gust of Wind, the Blink Keybind with Gust of Wind. So we can just keep that like that for now. Hmm. I'm thinking of making this, yeah, we'll probably have to make this bar a little bigger. To fit everything. Alright, let's redo this. F1, F2, F3, F4. Totemic Recall. Let's just put that shift F3 and we'll move it all over. All 
right, nature's swiftness. Uh, let's just go with Y for that one. I don't know, man. Alright, so that's going to be, that's the keybind part, right? And my other concern is making sure that everything has a weak, uh, a weak or attract. That should not say fun ghoul, that should say rogue. Let's open up the shaman one. We only have a few things here. So, let's try and line these up a little better. So I use weak ores to track most of my cooldowns here. So like if I were to hit, for example, thanks, I don't know how to ban out. I can pin the message or I can reply to it. All right, thank you. I did it, thank you so much. I never knew how to do that. All right, continuing on here. Let's see, okay, so I hit my flame elemental and that's actually gonna show up my shadow unit frames here. You see that little thing counting down? So I'm not gonna worry about that. Next one, I hit Ascendance. That's a pretty important one. We'll have to make sure we're tracking that one. So we'll go here, new aura. Make sure I spell this correctly. Make it the correct size, move it over. And there it is. Now that'll help, that'll be helpful for when I'm hitting, when deeply root elements come into play, when I'm hitting my lava burst, now that'll pop up and tell me that ascendance is up. Now we hit astral shift, of course, that's gonna pop up there. That one already has it tracked there. Berserking's right there. Um, Nature Swiftness is kind of just like a toggle, so all I have to knew, know is when it's blacked out there, it's ready to go. I think I need one for Spirit Walker's Grace now, though. See if that works. Mm -hmm. There it is. Now I can track exactly when I can cast and move. Do 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 do. Five more seconds on it. Boom ba boom boom ba boom. And then it's done. I have to stop. There we go. All right. Dwayne has also tracked. Totemic recall. Ancestral guidance. Yeah, I'm gonna wanna track ancestral guidance, of course. And then healing stream and totem. Okay, so I think I just have one more thing to add here and then we should be all good to go. Actually, I think I saw 
I think I saw it light up green down here, so I shouldn't have to track it. Hmm. I don't really want to wait three minutes to find out, so I'm just going to track it extra on my... Well, I mean, I guess I could check here. What are you tracking? Totem bar. Indicators. I don't think that's it. Um, I guess we'll find out in 30 seconds. I'll make it just in case. But I'm pretty sure I saw something green down here that was tracking that. not it. So now I know when Ancestral Guidance is up, that's, that's going to be like my vampiric embrace. Alright, so I think that's going to be it here. Um, let me just review my key bindings here. Make sure everything... Oh yeah, I didn't go through my book yet. Sky Fury. I didn't see this anywhere in there. And not in the talent tree anyway, it's just in the book. Well, it says, Harness the Fury of the Windlord to grant a target ally 2% mass. Wait, this was the buff that they were all, that everybody was talking about, weren't they? It's kind of like, kind of like P.I. in a way, only you cast it on someone and it's on them for an hour. So people are like arguing about who's going to get buffed by Sky Fury. Anyways, harness the fury of the Windlord to grant a target ally 2% mastery and empower their auto attacks to have a 20% chance to instantly strike again for one hour. Oh, if the target is in your party or raid, all party and raid members will be affected. That's huge. I have to make sure that this is on my bar down there. The community bar. Alright, 5, 4... Alright, so we have Earth Tongue. We got Earth Shield. We got our Lightning Shield. And then Sky Fury can be cast on me. Sweet. Um, to make things easy, we'll just say Shift Q for that one. Alright. Last thing on the list here, we're going to try and clean up my bottom bar just to make it look nice. Um, let's shorten the bars to there. And then we're going to rearrange them. First, I need to center it, though. There we go. And now I like to have... Let's see, one, two, three, so... I always like to have my mount to the far right here. And then I like to have my hearthstone and my grand expedition yak. So that's what that will look like. And then of course we have our water walking and our purge, which we'll flip and do like we'll do shift one there. Alt one there, and then F6 is always my res key. 
Alright, Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Healing Surge, Purge, Water Walking, and Ancestral Spirit. Alright. That. That. I consider my Shaman now to be 100% set up. I don't have any talent points left to spend. Uh, we are level 67. We are literally only one experience point away from hitting 68. That's weird. Like, if I look at a mob, I'm just going to level. <laughs> and I also have my... Um, my dailies to do here. Untrack that because I don't want to. Here's the bazaar. Do I have my plater updated here? Do I even have plater on this guy? I don't. What is wrong with me? Angry keystones, I think, is still a little broken. Let's bring details back. Uh, get rid of MDT for now. And World Quest Tracker. Hopefully it'll make everything look a little better. Yeah, it looks much, much better. So disgusting. Alright. Okay. I feel a whole lot better now about all this. Excellent. Well, that is going to conclude our video here today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my slow talk through walkthrough of how I try to learn the classes, what they do, and then kind of walk you through my process of getting everything key bound and getting the weak cores to track everything. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you again in the next video.